PDF in the process. Well, you know, as much, you know, Oracle was basically shutting down all the open source processes inside OpenOffice that were, you know, making it an open source process, uh, a project. And they were basically, you know, taking one resource, one sun resource after the other out of the PC. They were never really saying this that way, but they were, that, that's what they were doing. So the team at the TC was diminishing. And IBM uh, was basically the only company, uh, together with Microsoft, that that has let's say a, a, that has a seizable uh, a set of resources that could be uh, invested inside this TC. So we went from a very diverse contributor space into a less diverse contributor space. Now, it didn't affect ODF, let's say, as an actual open standard. The rule of the game hasn't changed at all. But what happened was simply that you had less resources, less, uh, you know, uh, uh, ability to react uh, to, uh, you know, the, the standardization work. And of course, you basically had a depletion of talents and skills. So in the end, uh, you know, the, the, as they say, the rest is history. But in the end, uh, you, you, you had LibreOffice and let's say a project that got, you know, that was, you know, just dying. Uh, and that was called openoffice.org. Then there was the Apache thing with the, the grant, which again meant that, you know, this is Oracle and Oracle is basically dumping everything over to Apache under the form of a license grant. And we're basically firing everyone at the Hamburg business unit. And note the chronology of all this. It's actually making sense. That is, the Hamburg business unit was fired within less than two years, uh, actually in between 18 and, and 24 months, uh, from, from, from that point, from the point, from the date of the uh, acquisition of Sun. So they executed exactly what they were on, despite anything they were they had been saying. So in that process, the ODF TC got well. We got casualties uh, in that process. I have to say this, and I have to commend IBM for all the good work they basically continue to put and they continue to invest during all that time at the level of the ODFTC. Now, the problem is that this created a situation where an environment where you basically had, a, you know, a dying project, open office, you had LibreOffice soaring, but still not coming to maturity, and an ODFTC that was in, in a situation where they had to release the ODF one or two specification for it to become an, an OASIS standard and then being pushed at the uh, ISOs, uh, at the ISO level. And all that basically created uh, or made ODF, you know, it turned ODF from the, uh, the, the spearhead of open standards and of open source to, well, the commonly agreed formats in between the people who don't want to share and use Microsoft Office file formats. It doesn't mean the ODF uh, you know, file format is, uh, you know, sucks. It, it's a great specification. It's a great standard. But the problem is that when we started, uh, you could Google the numbers of ODF do documents, uh, let's say that were readily available uh, on the internet. Well, and you had a pretty amazing numbers of that. And then Microsoft came in when it's Microsoft Office generating that pseudo open XML file format. And obviously their numbers started to soar. But, you know, the numbers of ODF were still very impressive. And the adoption of ODF continued. The procurement rules were being changed, and they're still being changed at the time we're speaking. Um, and, and people started to get more and more of this story on open standards and why open standards matter. But, you know, we on the field were basically losing blood. And, you know, we've been losing blood for a long time. And the net result of this is that in the end, um, while the public procurement rules 
uh, helps mandate ODF. We, and, and I'm, I'm speaking as a general way here, we, the ODF ecosystem, we were not able or we haven't been able yet to come up with an innovative uh, ODF implementation that will actually change and shift the parroting in the fields of office suites. I hope, I have a hunch, that will be up to LibreOffice. But at this stage, it's still not happening. It's still not happening. And again, so what we're seeing is we have very good ODF uh, specification. We have excellent ODF implementations. But the market traction is not there because we're not able to change the game. We could have changed that. Microsoft invested lots of money, as you know, into making sure that OpenXML would be an ISO standard. Uh, they were really ready for everything. But in the end, there was a ball. The ball landed in our camp, and we did not catch it. And it took us time to even actually understand that we hadn't catched that. We, had, we hadn't caught that. Um, so... You know, that's, that, that's where we are. You know, that's, that's where we are. So in the end, uh, you know, something that makes sense. An ODF makes complete sense. Uh, well, it just for some reason still is not obvious to people. And we are in a world, we live in a world where HTML5 makes sense. It's an open standard. We live in a world where, uh, you know, people use micro formats like VPARs. And, uh, you know, uh, iCal stuff. And all these are very much open standards and people use them and it's completely innovative. So it doesn't mean that open standards are not being understood by people or that people don't use them. They use them every day. But ODF, uh, there's something. There, there's, there's, uh, there's a use case here that we're missing but that we haven't been able to figure out and that the people you know, the people are not basically coming and flocking towards us saying, oh, yeah, this is great. Let's use that, you know. So, and I think that's that's the major challenge. I think that's the major challenge. Um, and I don't think at this stage it's going to be changed uh, by, you know, uh, changing the composition of the TC uh, at the Oasis. I think it's it's at the implementation level now that things are happening. All right. Um, one of the... Mm -hmm. Unfortunate things about it is, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, power shifts towards IBM? Because as I understand it, they not only gain more control over the TC, but also uh, when it comes to doing the modifications, the edits, the changes to the core, the uh, corpus of the uh, of the original project upon which, of course, LibreOffice builds. Um, as, as far as I can tell, it seems like it's moving a bit more towards evolving or devolving, depending on your point of view, into Symphony, which is part of a proprietary package. Yeah, so, huh, uh, that's an actually, that's, a, that's an interesting one. Um, so basically, at, at the level of the TC, I fundamentally believe that IBM didn't, and they did not want to come to that point. And by that point, I mean uh, a situation where they are not just in a position of authority, but they're basically in a position of doing pretty much, I wouldn't say all the work, but a very, uh, I mean, a rather important share of their of the work. And um, it, I'm pretty sure they have vested interest in, in obviously, in investing in ODF. That's true. But there's a level where you do a lot of things, and then there's that level where, in fact, if you were leaving the TC, uh, things would get a bit ugly, I think. And uh, again, you know, they have to be commended for that. So that's that's the direction of the power shift. Yeah. Now, if you go back to the the symphony and the open office code base and all that, I, I think that things are quite different. And uh, in that respect, you know, it's weird. Let's say. I think that that's what's happening at the uh, Apache level is a very weird story. Um, I don't have the, the the name of the game, but you know that's um, you know in some parts of town uh, here and there, you go and there's a guy who has like a small table and he will put three you know three cups and he takes your money and he says you know 
he puts one of the cups on top of your money and he says, well, you know, what cup is it? And he starts to, you know, shuffle the, the cups. Mm -hmm. So I think that what's happening is something like this at the Apache level. Because